Hello, hello, Just Start gang. It's Shanique here from startwithneath.com, the home of the Just Start University. One-on-one mentorship program for you, new and aspiring Christian online entrepreneurs. So if you want to learn how to maximize your mastery on Instagram, attract your ideal client to start a massive successful online business, then be sure to subscribe to my channel and you can also follow me on Instagram. It's going to be a casual video because it's going to be a whole Q&A on the most common questions that has been asked and I'm going to just do my best to answer it and give you all my insight on it. I want to just thank everyone who has already commented on my YouTube videos and have DM me via Instagram about more questions because I'm really open to help you out as much as possible or direct you to where you can get help. Be sure to keep those questions coming in and I will be uh, more than happy to make an effort to get back to you as soon as possible. So I just want to get right into these questions here. All my questions are here and I'm going to get to like maybe five, six. I don't want this video to be too long. I want to get to the most nitty gritty questions. Okay. So the first question I'm going to talk about is from Maxime. He had a lot of questions actually. And I'm going to quickly go through a few of them. I'm not going to be really extensive on them because you're just probably going to need to do research on your uh, on your own. But the first one was, should he use Spotify or have his own website? Because Shopify is still its web host, it can technically be your own website as well. If you're comparing to Etsy and your own website, that would be a more understandable question because Etsy is not a website. It's a platform where you buy. It's like a whole pool of different products and you buy it. Shopify, to my understanding, it's a web host. So you can use Shopify to make a website and sell your products. So technically two are the same, but definitely do your website to see which one's better for you and what you sell. I cannot give you a full answer because I don't know your industry. I don't know your target audience. I don't know, right? You have to do the market research for that and you have to figure out what that is. So go on YouTube and keep searching on your Google and do your comparisons that way. Payment platforms, Instagram or website or whatever that is. Again, another area where you need to research, Google whatever business you're doing and you could figure out anyone who's in that same industry, what they use. You can't take payments on Instagram. You can connect a payment platform whether that be facebook marketplace that you can connect that way on your website most website hosts you could connect it to paypal or stripe do that research so you can find out what is best for you but definitely i highly suggest that you do use a secured payment platform for the customer service for the surety of your customers and for the smoothness of your business okay so i personally right now use stripe for my business for many reasons i'm not gonna get into that but find a platform that works best for you and connect it to that whether it's paypal or stripe majority of the time the three major platforms to take payments via website hosts is stripe uh, paypal and square so you have to do the research and see what's best for you for me i use stripe personally right now so quickly running through it how to issue a invoice so many different options okay so according to your questions you're gonna be using a website so when you are on your website you connect it to your payment software whichever, whichever one you choose it shall automatically give a invoice okay so once you are on a website platform everything should be done for you you pay a lot of money each month for them not to do that you shouldn't be on that platform okay but let's say you are just starting out you don't have a website as of yet and you're taking local orders then there's other options to send in invoices you could still use paypal to send invoices you could still use stripe to um, send invoices and if you go on google and you put like invoice software there are so many different invoices platforms that you can use as well because i do send different invoices via my clients on my cleaning business and some of my clients i literally do e-transfers and then i would send a invoice using i forgot the app that I use but I put in the description box below okay and that's my local clients for my online clients the invoices are sent automatically via stripe so they have that documentation okay next question so shipping what company should I use and how all this is connected they're going to ask you what country you're from and then it will give you all the shipment 
providers that they can you can possibly use depending on your drop shipping or you're in a local shipment okay so this also depends on that too you may have the option that your customer chooses which shipment okay what label what what that means you have to determine what that means you have to do the research of like how much would shipping be um, across these different companies you have to figure out you have to now determine your prices according to your shipment expenses so gotta do the research man if you're drop shipping then those options are in maybe that the third party they already determine what providers they use because they're in a different country so you're not gonna use obviously Canada Post because they already set up what um shipment uh, company that they use right so it depends on your drop shipping it depends if you're in local and then if it's local you have to determine if you want to use Canada Post okay I'm talking saying Canada Post because Maxim's from Canada but there's Canada Post there's FedEx so you have to determine what you're going to be using depending on how big your packages are okay so do the research you want to um, also think about your expenses and then the quality of the company okay that's what you have to determine I cannot give you a straight answer for that as well. How to feel the market? How would I know if people would be interested in my products? Is there a way for me to market before going serious about my business idea? Absolutely, absolutely. You need to market research, okay? And you know, I'm gonna tell you, you need to. You have the option to, but you can, will be more successful when you do market research because you go out and ask a few people. In this video, I do talk about finding your business idea and you just find a few people that has either bought product within your industry, if you haven't sold, sold it already. According to you, an online baby store, find mothers, find families that obviously have children and ask them what type of clothing do you usually purchase what's the price point that you usually purchase what makes you not want to purchase from these stores or whatever those questions make sense to you and to your business so yes do the do research because you will find out what people do do not like so your products will resemble that um, and then you have a higher chance of higher conversion because you actually have a product that people want and you know that it's because you ask the your ideal client so you need to figure out who your ideal audience who your ideal client is and find people in that realm in that audience and ask these uh the questions that will make sense and help you create the perfect product the perfect website so that you are not stressing trying to get all the ideas yourself you get strictly from their mouths all right next question terms and condition how do i create my private policy and shipping policy okay so a few options when it comes to your website host depending on where you do if you do your own website you probably won't find the policy already created but something like shopify they should already have like generic shipment and terms and policy templates some of them do when i worked with Webly, I believe they did have like a general return policy set up you would just read through it and kind of plug in and plug out what makes sense and you can use that as your policy that's one option so you can go on terms feed I recently discovered this when I was making my last video on how to start a business which is this one and it is a great website it, it helps you plug in your information with a terms and policy uh, setup so it literally like generates one for you and it, it has a, a few different options whether it be your cookie policies on the websites it could be the um, terms of use and all that and it gives you an option to, for a website or an app so it's really great and that's if you do not have money for a lawyer so as you scale up your business you're making great income I do suggest that you do an a, eventually invest in a lawyer that will help you make a very clear terms and condition that will cover you from any loopholes or anything like that especially if you are interacting with more people on a greater scale and especially for coaches consultant mentors that speak to people and give advice to people you want to protect yourself and give disclaimers that there's no guarantee that if you use my program you're going to make x amount of dollars you need to cover that because some people may really think that the moment I coach with you, I'm going to be rich and that's not what you're promising them. You're giving them strategies to get there, but there's different policies and procedures and all that stuff and disclaimers that you want to still put in there to protect you. So use that if you cannot afford a lawyer right now. And then there is general terms templates that you can use as long as there is some form of protection on your website when you first start it'd be great 
Again, if you use places like Shopify, usually they have a term of use on their website and you are using their platform. So it also covers you a bit as well. So you don't really need to worry about that so much if you're using a platform like that. But if you're using your own website, you do want to have your terms and policy to protect you when people are using your own website. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you have any questions, comment below because I just want to make sure that you understand them. Next question is business account, what bank it's best for you again this is another you have to do your research on the banks my pro tip when it comes to this is to go in usually you have to go in anyways but i know covid and everything wants to be on like you have to be on your phone to do some of these um the first initial processes make an effort to schedule a sit down with the bank that you're considering because my pro tip is to, you should not feel obligated to go to a bank, okay? You are bringing business to them, especially this is your baby and you're bringing income, right? And you're going, you are trusting this bank to hold your income. They have nothing over you, you have something over them. You are bringing your business to them, okay? Even if you have zero dollars, you need to have that mindset that you want to make sure that this relationship, this partnership with this bank is something you're comfortable with, okay? So I made a mistake of, because I've seen a great, promotion on like a bank account with less transactions via electronic i went to that bank i don't want to talk about that i went to that bank and right away i made this account but the person was not helpful it they made it seem like i was some sketchy mobster or something asking me all these questions and i get it you need to have some privacy questions or whatever procedures that you have but it didn't seem genuine it seemed like they were trying to like probe in and and they were lacking the understanding of a mobile app. And I, then I had to get really upset. Okay, this is a story time. But I, I got pretty upset because it seems like they were trying to put me in a fraud bubble because they didn't understand my idea for an application and my corporation. So I, eventually I stayed with the bank for maybe three weeks and I left because there was no good customer service. There was no understanding there. There was no effort of educating and you know letting me know the ins and outs. So I left within three weeks for that bank. So when you go for a bank, just know that you are bringing your business and that you want to work and partner with someone that's holding it, you're trusting your money with and your growth and eventually investments and all that. You want to know that you're sitting down with someone that you want to have a long-term relationship with basically because you need that. You need to trust the person that it, holds your your income you need to understand that that person's going to tell you the best ins and outs really because you don't know it i mean i didn't come into as a business owner as a financial advisor i need a financial advisor you need someone who's going to help you with your income and all that stuff so uh, make sure that there there's great customer service make sure that that person's willing to teach you okay that's that's your job they're supposed to advise if they're making a big deal to advise you then you don't want to be there especially long term, okay? And think about how easy is it to attain your money, okay? Depending if you're online only or if you're in a, uh, you do take orders as well via person, you wanna make sure that the process is easier. If, you're, if you have to cash a check and you have to wait two weeks, I'm sure you don't wanna do that. So find a bank that is gonna be a little bit less or whatever, maybe after six months, you get it directly right away. So ask those questions and make sure it's even think about how close it is to you because you want to maybe you want to run to the bank if it's four blocks away versus the closest bank is two blocks away and you did have a great experience there then you want to make make sure you go to the bank that's maybe two blocks away okay that is my suggestion finding the right bank but you do have to make the the time to research what makes sense and do the research and you may have to go to a few banks and that's okay and maybe you like the bank that you already have right but you want to make sure it's the certain branch that you open up with because again great bank some people have really not really helpful people so you go to another branch and that's okay and i've done that too because i have a better relationship with um that advisor and they're more helpful right so that is that but thank you so much for seeing my my videos as informative and your question it was and i did message you via dm but should i incorporate or not so how exposed your businesses, how, you know, whether it's online, in person, how fast you can grow. If you are waiting to incorporate, like some, some places, the corporations could be $300, $500 and just starting out, you don't have that, right? I wouldn't suggest that you 
do not start because you do not have the vestment to incorporate it because incorporation is a whole different ball game right than so papyrus ship which is sixty dollars to get your your business license in canada okay and my suggestion is is to get into the business you know make that make, make that decision and get your business license at bare minimum did I, I didn't have a business license for maybe three months into my business. I was taking transactions. I don't recommend it, but I did. It wasn't until a couple months later, because I had to with my mobile app, is when I was incorporated. But I wasn't planning to get incorporated if it wasn't for the app. Okay, so pro tip, at least get your business license, get your foot in there. And you not you don't want to make the excuses I need to get incorporated or whatever. But unless you you're going to make an app, I know you have to. There's certain certain industries that you have to get incorporated, then get incorporated. But if you're asking whether or not, first get the business license, make an income, and then incorporate because there are protections in incorporations, but there's also more legal issues or whatever. And I would say issues, but more more problems. You get a bigger that way there's a lot of things you have to a lot of more responsibilities i should say okay versus if you're a sole, sole proprietorship with a business license so hopefully that helps do the research at least get the business license and work up to incorporate it because incorporation is a great blessing as well the next question is do i have to pay 60 dollars again for a hst number and no HST is completely free to register for the CRA. If you cannot do business without that request, and sometimes they do, and you want an HST number for that case, then just do it. You can register your business with the CRA voluntarily, so you don't have to. You don't have to make go over the threshold of thirty thousand to be eligible to get your HST number. If that's not the case. You can voluntarily now, which just means that now you can charge taxes and stuff like that. If you are not registered with with the CRA, you are not eligible to charge any taxes at all if you're not registered to do that, okay? All right, according to this question, do you still have to put your business as Ontario if you're online business? Yes. Wherever you do business, whatever your location of your business is, like if you're doing your business and you're doing your online stuff in your room, in your Ontario home, then you are registered as Ontario, okay? Wherever you need to be sending your business license or wherever you need to send anything according to your business, that is where your location is, okay? Unless you have a PO box or a office space, your business is where you do your business, okay? If you're from your home, it is in your home. You are still from Canada or wherever province you're from. And this is the same for the States, okay? That is where you Put your address okay especially if you're print on demand you obviously when you're registering you put your old obviously your own location where you are you're in from material that's where your business is from if you're talking about like returns usually your print on demand will let you return or your customer return to their location that's separate to your business so like legally where you live if you're doing it from your home that is where your business is running okay that's where you will uh, register your address as. Okay, all my Americans. So this question kind of threw me off guard. Can you get an EIN without registering? So when I Googled, EIN is equivalent to a business license. So you would need to register to get that number. It's your number, it's your identification of what you're doing right if it's equivalent okay to my understanding if it's equivalent to a master business license here in Canada that is our registration we have to register to get that number so hopefully that helps I kind of responded back saying I have no idea what the EIN and I just googled it I'm like okay it's the same so then you need to register in order to get that that's one of the same so thank you for your comment okay just again that is it thank you so much for your questions keep them coming if you want to start and you are starting an online business, be sure to subscribe just to let you know that I have an Instapreneur Mastery course now available. So check that out. Link below if you want to master your Instagram to attract to your ideal clients, to thrive in your industry and your niche and have me as your mentor or coach. I got you. So thank you so much. In the meantime, for next week's video, because, you know, every Friday I'm here, watch these two videos as you wait 
for the next video. Thank you for staying and being subscribed. Keep sharing the good news and keep up the great work. I'll see you in my next video.